Good morning. I'm going to read a little from Ephesians 1. This is verse 7. King James. In whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. When you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to God the Father. When you believe and you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in you. He guides you. He strengthens you. He is our best friend, our King, our Savior, our Bridegroom, our everything. He's all we need. Our Heavenly Father, our Savior. Your sins are washed clean, past, present, future. God sees everybody's heart. The ones that truly have repented and want to live for Christ. And if you haven't, if you're thinking, well, I think I'll wait. I would not wait. Your next hour isn't promised. Heaven and hell are real places. You will spend eternity in one of those places. You will spend eternity in one of those places. Don't lose hope. Because our hope is in Jesus. You have so much awaiting you in heaven. And the rapture is going to happen soon. And if you haven't accepted Jesus... As Lord and Savior, I implore you to do it today. Anybody that by now that doesn't see the times we're living in, they're too wrapped up in themselves and they're not look they may not be looking for the Lord's return. I'm not saying that they are or aren't, but I mean they may not be because like when Jesus was that was my mother, I'm sorry. When Jesus came into the world, when he was born. Not many people were looking for his arrival. Some were, but very few. He's about to return. People are about to vanish. And there's been videos circulating of, okay, the rapture is slowly happening because people are starting to vanish. Those are fake videos. The rapture hasn't happened yet. The rapture hasn't happened <clears throat> in bits and pieces. Excuse me. It's going to happen all at once. My mother again, I'm sorry. Walk with Christ. He loves you. He loves you so much. He sacrificed himself for you. Our Heavenly Father loves us so much. He sent his only begotten Son. That he who believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Don't waste another second. <clears throat> this world is on the brink of World War III. In my opinion, it already is. But Now, this is from War News 247. There's been a mass attack against the U.S. bases in Syria and Iraq. 30 Americans have been injured. My prayers go out to them and their families. C-17 transports them to Germany. Biden has warned Iran. This is getting worse by the second. Sorry, that was my bed. A C-17 Globemaster 3 with a medical evacuation call sign heads to Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany to transport wounded American soldiers to Landstuhl, I might have said that wrong, military hospital. Yesterday, a U.S. Central Command announced that 24 U.S. soldiers were injured on October 18th as a result of a drone attack on the al Tanif uh, military base in southern Syria. 20 Americans were injured in this attack. When did this... Well, this, this article just came out today, so... Um, This was followed by a second drone attack the same night on Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq that wounded four American soldiers. Newer information speaks of 30 to 39 wounded American soldiers as attacks by pro-Iranian forces continued until yesterday. They got a lot of tweets, too. Um, Biden, we will respond to Iran if the attacks continue. Respond to Iran now. I mean... It's, I mean, they're going to continue. They're not going to stop. What's he waiting for? No. Maybe that's wrong to say. I, maybe, I don't know. Some people, I can see it right now, but it's, I don't know. U.S. fake president Joe Biden warned Iran's supreme leader on Wednesday. Let me shut my door. My mother is up almost 80 and she uh, keeps her... Her phone very loud. I'm sorry. I don't know if you can hear that. Phone, but... 
Okay. Yeah, Biden's warned the Iran Supreme Leader on Wednesday that the U.S. would respond if Iran or its ally, allied proxies attacked U.S. forces stationed in the Middle East. Speaking at a joint... Sorry, it's a noisy bed. Speaking at a joint press conference with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese at the White House, Biden said, quote, my warning to the Ayatollah was that if to continue to move against these troops, if they continue to move against these troops, we will respond and he should be prepared. <clears throat> On Monday, Pentagon spokesman General Patrick Ryder told reporters that U.S. troops at the Al Tanif garrison in southern Syria shot down two drones targeting their positions. <clears throat> no soldiers were injured. Ryder also said Monday that the Pentagon would hold Iran responsible for strikes against the U.S. troops, given Iran's past support for those groups. And I got a video here. Arab TV channel pro-Iranian groups in Syria attacked three U.S. bases. <sighs> this is out of hand. The situation in the Middle East has become increasingly tense. Shiite groups, Shi Shiite groups in countries neighboring Israel have begun attacking military bases of Israel's main ally, the United States, the day before a series of strikes were carried out against U.S. forces in Syria. Remember what the Bible says about Damascus? Becoming a ruinous evil. <coughs> Excuse me. According to al Mayadin TV channel, the previous day, pro-Iranian groups in Syria almost simultaneously attacked three U.S. military bases in al Tanif al Shahid. Shahidi and Al Omar areas using drones. The pro Iranian Iraqi Islamic resistance group, <clears throat> excuse me, which includes Shiite militants, claimed responsibility for the strikes. Quote, the, I'm going to give this a shot here. Mujahideen, I don't know if that's right, of the Islamic resistance of Iraq attacked two U.S. held bases in Syria, Al Omar and Al Sh Shad. Day-D, using kamikaze drones, the enemy suffered significant damage, the message reads. Yesterday, the U.S. military base, oh, these names, Karab el Jir in northern Syria, came under rocket attack by fighters in a Shiite Islamic group, resistance group. In total, U.S. military targets were attacked 14 times in Iraq and Syria. And they have published a statement claiming responsibility for the tax. They have it here, but I can't read it because it's in a different language. So basically, they're claiming responsibility. So, um, U.S.-led coalition forces have begun live fire exercises at military bases in Iraq and Syria. On October 25th, 2023, co <coughs> co <coughs> excuse me, coalition service members began operational ground exercises in or near the al uh, these names, Hazaka, H-A-S-A-K-A-H, probably said that wrong, I'm sorry, area in Syria to validate weapon systems and maintain crew proficiency and readiness, the statement said. In addition, <coughs> excuse me, the rest of the coalition forces will conduct, conduct basic defense and operational ground exercises in or near the I'm just going to spell it out. K-H-A-L-I-D-I-Y-A-H. Easier to spell it out. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Area in Iraq to validate weapons readiness and maintain crew proficiency and readiness. Did I just read that? Oh, they just repeated themselves. The drills come as U.S. troops stationed in the Middle East have been attacked 14 times. 11 times in Iraq and 3 times in Syria between October 17th and the 24th. The attacks include a mix of drones and missiles. The latest attack came on Tuesday in Iraq when pro-Iranian forces fired at a missile at the Al-Assad Air Base. Two U.S. defense officials said the same base, which is located west of Baghdad, was the victim of the separate attack on October 18th. The same morning in Iraq, early warning systems indicate a possible threat approaching the Al-Assad Air Base. U.S. spokesman said Thursday during a press briefing. Unfortunately, a U.S. civilian contractor suffered a heart attack while in a shelter and died shortly thereafter. That's sad. My prayers go out to him and his family. Wow. 
Wow. Also, on October 18th, I'll... Harir, Harir, H-A-R-I-R, or Harir, Air Base near Erbil and uh, Tanef. <laughs> these names. I know I'm, I'm messing up these names so bad, I'm sorry. In Syria, were also attacked. And they got a letter here. Um, U.S. Embassy in Kuwait to limit activity on U.S. military bases after Iraqis. Malicious threat. This... Last I checked, didn't this regime give Iran money? I think there's a lot behind the scenes that we pretty much know that they're trying to hide. That we pretty much know, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Every day we're here is a day to plant a seed. But the restrainer is holding all hell from breaking loose. I really believe that as the you know what's drop, we go up. That's that's what I could be wrong, but that's what I'm that's what I believe. So we're close. We're very close. We are going home. I agree with Watchwoman sixty five. I don't see us being here another year. I don't I don't see us being here another year. Now, of course, there's always that possibility we could, but the way things are escalating, I'm like 80% sure we're not going to be here another year. She was mentioning her birthday. I have a birthday coming up March 2nd. May not be here. If I am, this will be my last birthday here. So, we're going home. Hang in there. Little um, update on my little jazzy, my little jazzy poo. Um, they have our antibiotics and, uh, what is that? Nah. Um, antibiotics and probiotics. And um, she just did a, a little, you know what, outside. And it's not number three again, it's back to number two. Okay. So she had some kind of bacteria. So, um. Now I gotta fo now that she's getting better, I gotta put my focus back on Smokey. That poor Smokey, that lump is so big. So um but hang in anyway, hang in there, family. Keep looking up because our King and King, our Lord of Lords, our Savior, our Yeshua, our bridegroom, our best friend, our Savior, our King, our everything. He's coming back and he's coming back really soon. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>